It's no doubt that vibe coding or just AI agents and coding in general have unlocked tons of potential if you wanted to start your own solo company. Throughout my whole life, I've had a series of random side hustles. I stopped having one after a while, but after I saw AI and coding come back into existence, I'm jumping right back on the train. So in this series, I'm going to be updating you weekly what I've been doing with vibe coding, getting a product out into the market, buying paying customers and seeing how much I can make. My goal for now is to make $10,000 a month in monthly recurring revenue. So that's a decent amount just as a side project. Make sure to subscribe to follow the journey and let's see what we can make. Today we're gonna go over the app I created or launched two days ago. I used Vibe Coding for a little bit of it. Well, actually, I initially used it for a lot of it. Ripped almost like 50%, 60% of it out because the code is just trash. And then just use it as more of an assistance as it's intended to be than the actual main driver. So today we're gonna go over what I created and potentially get $10,000 of monthly recurring revenue or MMR uh, for this app. I started this app in, I would say like February. So it's been maybe three, three-ish months. Uh, at first it was just a hobby, just playing around with AI tools. But if it slowly became something, I was like, wow, this is really powerful. And I just continued to build on it. So this is my app that I released two days ago. There's still a lot of bugs and we're going to go over just why I released it and also tell you like what needs to get done uh, before I really start pushing this out and trying to find some users. So this is my landing page of the AI real estate assistant that never sleeps. Uh, there's a screenshot here. So basically it is a CRM that can respond to messages automatically. When, when I say messages, this is like actual SMS messages. I need to fix this. This is the same screenshot actually. Essentially what it does is that it has two goals. The first goal being it will collect search criteria from the actual user. So if they want a three bed, two bath, what their price range is, how much square, what locations, all that, that the app will collect. And the second goal or the most important goal is for the AI agent to schedule either a in-meeting buyer consultation or seller consultation, or to schedule some buyer showings to take their clients around. And the reason why I chose that second goal in particular is because I'm on a real estate team. And one thing I noticed is that, and my team lead and even Zillow training consistently train you to go see these people in person, because once you see those people in person, the conversion rate of them actually doing some type of contact with you goes through the roof. So that is like the one action that will break a lot of barriers. This says automatic lead nurturing. So you can see like I have a schedule of all the delivered messages as well as scheduled messages. We'll get into that later. This is arbitrary pricing that I have right now. I haven't even set up my Stripe account yet, which is a, you know, action item for me. But this is what I have for pricing. It seems reasonable. Um, And so, yeah, that's about it. And so when you click sign in or try now, it links you to the actual app, which is app.realnurture.ai. So this is like the live screen. This is my personal account. And so here's a dashboard. I, I have it as a freemium model right now. There should be a free tier. So I limit the number of leads you can create and text. Then I also have scheduled messages, messages delivered, appointment schedule. And so this is the calendar. You can see that right here in the 24th, this is a scheduled message that is going to be sent to test user three. I have another scheduled message on the 27th that I'm going to send to myself um, and we'll get into that later. Actually, let's do the lead screen first. So this is just the lead screen in general. I'll tell you the status of the, the lead as well as whether AI is enabled or, or not, phone number, email, blah, blah, blah. And so when I click into it, here is like a live demo. So I said, hey, hi there. This is Alex Larshevek with EXP Realty Serene Team. How's your day going? I'd love to help you find a perfect home. Have you started looking at any listings yet or just exploring options? And by the way, this is not me manually typing any of this. This is all open AI responding based on my system prompt. Then I respond, I'm doing great. Yes, I want to buy a home. The AI responds, that's awesome to hear. Congrats on starting your home search to get a better idea of what you're looking for. Can you tell me your ideal timeline for moving? Also, were there must-haves in your home, like a number of bedrooms or specific features? But soon, maybe in two months, I didn't answer this on purpose. And then from here, I said, great. 
a two month timeline gives us good focus. Your new home, do you have a preferred number of bedrooms and bath? Also, you're looking for new builds or a particular neighborhood. And so I didn't respond on purpose. I just thought I basically ghosted myself or ghosted the, the real estate agent. So basically it's a text, the last text that you sent. And from there, it will have a scheduled message depending on these inputs. So like a new lead, I'll respond after three days. In conversation, respond seven days. And inactive lead, I'll respond in 30 days. So that is where the magic happens. The magic also happens here where the AI can detect a client appointment. So here, I'll actually show you a live demo. So if I say, hey, let's look at live homes tomorrow at 3 p.m. I don't know if I can see that. Let's wait some time. So I sent that message, it received my message, and now it's firing off some open API calls. And we will be sending messages soon. So if I go back to dashboard, you can actually see that just delivered some messages. So it says, sounds perfect. I'll get some great options ready for you just to confirm what's your budget and minimum number of bedrooms. As you can see here, it detected that a client wants an appointment. And so you can go here, there's an auto-generated appointment for May 22nd, which is in two days, which that's a bug actually. <laughs> this should be the May 21st, uh, May 22nd. Yeah, that's definitely a bug. So yeah, that's pretty much my MVP of the app. I had a ton more features I had before, but like I said, in the beginning of the video, I basically scrapped everything or almost everything because the AI got a little out of hand and I was vibe coding too hard and it just didn't know what it was doing. So this is what I have for like general things I need to add. I'm still doing stuff in progress and I'll show you the new features that I make probably next in next week's video. So a lot of features to be done still. I still have zero users at the moment, but we'll make this better and we'll start getting real user feedback uh, from people. I'm using a Postgres database called Supabase. It's a Postgres software as a service, and um, it does everything in terms of auth. They have edge functions if you want that. Um, they have storage. Then for my backend deployment, I use fly.io. I use this because it was fairly cheap, to be honest. Right now, I've accumulated 28 cents for probably two days of going live. So, you know, that's quite inexpensive. Now, on top of that, for my front end hosting, I have Vercel and I'm, I'm still on the free version. I don't think I've crossed the threshold of needing anything more than that. But here is my landing page and here is my app and I deployed them separately. For texting SMS, I am using Twilio, which is the number one kind of service for SMS. And then lastly, for my API calls, I am calling OpenAI. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this MVP that I launched. I think the main thing that I need to focus on is number one, fixing all the bugs that we have here and also a bunch of core features. I should already have Stripe set up. I need to add search criteria back in. Uh, I have some errors with some reset your password bugs. A lot of things that I need to really nail down before I think it's a complete product. And then once that happens, just to continue to get continuous feedback and to see if I could find some product market fit. I'll be uploading every single week to show my progress on what I created. Make sure to hit subscribe if you want to keep up on my updates on creating this app and others to hit that $10,000 a month goal. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.